Hello everyone, this is a fourth session, Rule Placement with Open Flow. In the previous section, we have seen the first part of this topic. In that, you have learned the basic concept of SDN, the layers in open flow network architecture, what is open flow protocol and the challenges faced by rule placement. Today, we are going to see the second part of the rule placement with open flow in more deeper. The outline of today's session is Introduction to Open Flow, Techniques to Implement Rule Placement for Memory Limitations, Open Flow Protocol Message Types, Open Flow Specifications. As we discussed in the previous session, to control the open flow switches, SDN controller will push the rules into the switches so that they can take decisions when the network traffic hits. The forwarding rules used by the legacy and SDN network devices to perform routing or forwarding decisions are generally stored in ternary content addressable memory which offer constant lookup times. Software defined network is the way to manage the network which separates the control plane from the forwarding plane. An open flow implements a part of the SDN concept through the communication protocol in the form of flows which is to be processed by the intermediate network devices. In open flow, forwarding plane are called as open flow switch and all the forwarding decisions are flow based. An open flow switch consists of flow tables each containing a list of rules that determine how the packets to be processed by the switch. A rule consists of three main components, a matching pattern, action field and a counter. More number of rules have to be stored in switch. Because of the limited memory capacity, all the required rules might not be stored into the flow table of the switch. To manage the switch memory, three methods of solutions were proposed. The first one is efficient techniques. The main idea of this technique is to remove the flow entry in the flow table when there is a new entry. The main task of this technique is to find which rule to be removed and which rule to be keep. This can be done by the replacement algorithm such as least recently used first in first out and random replacement. The second one is compression technique which is used to build the flow tables that are as compact as possible by leverage redundancy of information between the different rules. The third one is split and distribution technique. Usually a single switch does not have a sufficient ternary content addressable memory that is TCM to store all the rules. TCM is a specialized type of high-speed memory that searches its entire content in a single clock cycle. Therefore, a set of rules is usually split and distributed over the network according to the device capacity. The next, we are going to see message types. The OpenFlow protocol supports three types of messages. They are controller to switch, asynchronous and symmetric and each of this type has multiple subtypes. Controller to switch message, which is initiated by the controller in order to manage or examine the switch state. It may expect switch to respond for the query sent by the controller. For example, the controller may send a feature request query to the switch. The switch must reply which specifies the switch capability. Likewise, the controller will send configuration query, modify state messages, read state messages, packet out messages and barrier request or reply messages to switch with the purpose to know or manage the switch state. The second type is asynchronous message. Switch initiates asynchronous messages for the purpose to update the network events or any changes in the switch state. The switch usually sends asynchronous messages to the controller to address a packet arrival, switch state change or any error occur. There are four asynchronous messages are there. They are packet in message, flow based message, port status message or error message. The third one is symmetric messages which are initiated by either direction that is sent by either controller or switch for the purpose to know the connection state or to measure the latency. The symmetric message subtypes are hello message and echo message. The next we are going to see open flow specification. The open flow protocol specifications are available in different versions. A list of updates was added in every version. The first version of the open flow protocol is OpenFlow 1.0.0 which was released in the year 2008, the month December. This specification supports 12 header fields and a payload field. When the packet arrives to a particular switch, it checks with the flow table the one or more header field of the packet may match and based on that the action will take place. The next version is OpenFlow 1.1 specification. A switch contains several flow tables and a group table instead of just one single flow table as in the open 
OpenFlow 1.0. This table shows the main components of OpenFlow switch and the highlighted are the added attributes of the OpenFlow 1.1 version. The processing of the packet entering the switch has changed as there are multiple flow tables available in the switch. The flow table in the switch are linked to each other through the process termed as pipeline processing. When the switch receives the packet, first it will look the flow table to check whether there is any match with the flow entry. The OpenFlow specification version 1.2 was released in December 2011 and it includes a major features. Mainly this specification supports IPv6 addressing and matching could be done using IPv6 source and destination address. The OpenFlow specification version 1.3 was released in June 2012. The improvement of this version from version 1.2 are able to control the rate of packets through per flow meter and cookies can be added to the packets sent from the switch to the controller. The next version 1.4 was released in October 2013. The main feature which includes flow monitoring and to allow better coordination between multiple controllers, table synchronization and message bundling. The current version of OpenFlow is 1.5 which was released in December 2014. The feature includes egress table, flow entry statistic trigger, meter action. The version 1.6 has been available from September 2016 but it is accessible only to ONF members. The next we are going to see capabilities of OpenFlow. OpenFlow architecture allows centralized controller of the network which is done by the controller. Usually controller is centralized so it has extensive knowledge about the network. Instead of having several network devices with limited knowledge of the network, we have the controller can take the decisions based on the knowledge of the entire network. And this OpenFlow network allows software based traffic analysis which can be performed by using algorithms, databases and some software tools. Networks using OpenFlow abstract all traffic as flows. Another capability of OpenFlow network is dynamic updates of forwarding rules. Any changes in the network topology is based on the decision taken by the software controller. Here there is a no human interaction because the controller can modify the flow table entries at any time. Now we have come to the end of the session. In this session you have learned the features of different specification of the OpenFlow protocol which is meant to implement SDN based network. Techniques to implement role placement where we have a limited memory space in switch. The next we have seen the message types of OpenFlow protocol. In the last we have seen the capabilities of OpenFlow. In the next session we are going to discuss about controller placement problem. Thank you.